Hey guys, my name is Nathan Munoz, and today I'm going to be talking about the amazing features in the 3D mouse from 3D Connection. The mouse that I have right now is called the Space Navigator, which is the basic product from 3D Connection. This is only $90 on their website, that's their base price, and it is a very versatile and easy to use mouse. So the center or the control center of the 3D mouse is the cap, which is able to rotate in six different directions. Then you have the two buttons on the side. And then these are customizable with whatever program you're using, such as Autodesk Inventor, AutoCAD, anything that is able to use the 3D mouse is able to be customized and be able to assign certain controls to these buttons. And then the cord itself is is a bit lengthy, you know, it's about I probably say about 5 6 feet. So you can actually pull it away from your computer and not have to be hooked up directly to it really close. And it has a little LED which turns on underneath the, the cap when you plug it into the computer. On the bottom it has this sort of rubber padding and then the actual metal itself weighs quite quite a lot. I'd probably say about six to eight ounces and what this does is it creates the benefit and the effect of you know you can put it down on the table and you can try to move it around you know applying some force here and it's not it's not going to be able to move anywhere due to the weight of the metal around it. So that's the basic features of the 3D Space Navigator. But I, I also have another mouse with me today and this mouse is what I personally like to use. This is the Space Explorer from 3D Connection. As you can see it is a lot bigger and it weighs more than a space navigator. This is due to the fact that it has more space for your hand. It actually has a cover where you can place your hand and it relaxes your hand and it's a lot. You don't have to worry about getting your hand stuck on the table while you're using it. It also has a bunch more buttons, you know, that I will go to in detail later. And it also has the main feature of the 3D mouse, which is the cap in the center, which is able to move around in six, six uh, degrees of motion, which I will talk about later. And that is the Space Explorer. This is actually around $300 on the base price for on the 3D website. You can buy it cheaper on websites like Amazon and eBay, um, but the base price is $300. I really like this mouse. I had the Space Navigator at first, but I purchased the Space Explorer um, when I realized that just having two buttons wasn't enough. And the Space Explorer, the amount of buttons on it really, really help you work in the 3D space. So now I'm going to talk about the buttons, the customizable buttons on the Space Explorer. The Space Explorer has over 10 customizable buttons around the cap. These buttons are what make the Space Explorer a must-have as it cuts down the time it takes to assemble objects or make important feature changes. By default, the buttons are set to the configuration shown, but these can be changed either in the driver menu or in the application itself, like Autodesk Inventor or AutoCAD. I will now show you how to customize the buttons and other features of the mouse in the 3D mouse driver window. When you go to the 3D Mouse website, there are two options for downloading drivers. You can download the official driver here and select the supporting software and whichever mouse you're using. But the driver I personally like to use is the one that can be found here. This Meta driver 
tr I believe truly unlocks the true potential of your 3D mouse. It is supported on multiple platforms and it has been worked on enough to where I believe it is a completely safe alternative to the official driver. Now let's take a look at the driver menu itself. So when you first open up the 3D mouse driver menu, you will see this interface. And you can select them whatever mouse you're using here. So for my case, if I had the Space Navigator and the Space Explorer plugged in at the same time, I could select either one and customize the settings here. But you're not going to be using both mouse at the same time, so I think that is kind of redundant. One of the cooler features is the Select Application Profile drop-down menu. If you click this, you will see, first of all, each of the profiles you are have, using right now. So, for example, if I was running Showcase, which I am, then it will pop up here and I can actually customize the features in the menu real time. You can also see all of the other pre-programmed profiles that are supposed to work with the 3D driver. All of these are the actual programs that have customizable features inside of them. Now the actual menus themselves, you have motion, advanced motion, buttons, and tools. In the motion menu, you can change the navigation speed of your 3D mouse overall. So if you want to make your mouse really fast, you can drag the menu up and your navigation speed will dramatically increase or you can slow it down and have it at around 0.5 and this is the setting I personally like to use. You can also check the show additional options and the threshold will affect how your 3D mouse responds to the actual movement itself. So when you move the 3D mouse you can shut the threshold to a high number and wait cause the application to actually delay itself before you actually see the effects of the movement on the 3D mouse. The advanced motion tab is the coolest feature of the beta driver. This is where you can actually change every single directional movement on the 3D mouse to whatever you want and you can customize each of them separately from the overall motion tab. This is where you can change your movements from left to right, for example, instead of having it pan left and right, you can change it to zoom or either pan up and down. You can also reverse the action so where when you move it to the left, it moves to the right, and when you move it to the right, it moves to the left. You can also change each of the features here to the keyboard, 2D mouse, or a joystick. These are more customizable features that for example, if you're using an A flight simulator, you would change your configuration to joystick and select any one of these pre-programmed in options. The other cool feature is the buttons. And these can be controlled and customized for each of the application windows that you need. So, for example, if I have my Autodesk Inventor open, I can customize each one of these buttons to anything. So, for example, if I want the 2D to turn rotations on or off, I would actually have to go into the GUI to assign these buttons. I can also change any of these. This would be the example of where the application itself actually has a pre-placed add-in for the 3D mouse. But for other applications, for example, like Microsoft Word, this is where you can actually use each one of these things. So for example, one, you can program to where it dominates on and off, or you show the pop-up menu, or you have the properties for the actual 3D mouse. There's a bunch of other customizable things. Oh, the Showcase is another really cool program that I like to use, and has a bunch of different programmable features inside of this driver. The last thing is the tools menu. This just shows you which 3D mouse you're using, if you want to turn the LED on or off on your mouse, which is a really cool feature if you want to. You can also calibrate your 3D mouse, and it will also show you the 3D mouse driver version that you're currently using. You can also access technical support 
and go to the forum itself to ask questions or see other any important features. I will now demonstrate how the 3D mouse function and works in the 3D modeling software like Autodesk Inventor. As I said before, some applications support changing the configuration of the 3D mouse buttons in the application itself. Autodesk and AutoCAD are examples of these programs, and the menu can be found in the Add-ins tab on the ribbon. When you click Customize Buttons, you will find there is an enormous number of options of you can program to each button on the mouse. It's as simple as finding the, the command that you want to use and dragging it over to the button itself. The configuration I have set up is keeping all the buttons at their default setting except for 1 and 2 which really were made to be customizable. The number 1 button I have set up to apply constraint which can be found in the all commands category and if you scroll down to the apply you will find that there are six or seven different applies but I found through experience the third one is the one that actually is the apply constraint command. The number two button I have set to constraint menu and that can be found in the assembly category and applying the constraint command to the number two button. The reason I have set these buttons to this configuration is because I believe these maximize a person's efficiency while modeling because these are the two menus you use the most when creating assemblies in an AutoCAD and Inventor. I will now demonstrate how the buttons and mouse actually work while assembling in Inventor. On the screen, I have a model I have built using pre-built and custom-made parts. When navigating around the model, when I push the cap up and down, the model zooms in and out. When I push the cap forward, the model moves up, and I push the cap down, the model moves down. When I spin the cap to the left, the model spins to the left, and when I spin the cap to the right, the model spins to the right. When I push the cap to the right, the model moves to the right. When I push the cap to the left, the model moves left. When I roll the cap for backward, the model spins forward, and when I roll the cap forward, the model spins backward. And when I roll the cap to the right, the model rolls to the right, and when I roll the cap to the left, the model rolls to the left. We'll now look at some of the how the buttons function when they are pressed. So when you press the top button, the model automatically moves to the top. When you press the left button, the model moves to the left view. And when you press the right button, the model moves to the right view. And when you press the F button, the model moves to the front. You also have these two buttons on the front. First one, panel, which brings up the features that you can customize on the 3D mouse and the fit button which fits your model to the screen so if you're rotated around you press the fit and it will automatically zoom all the way out to fit your model to the screen. On the sides you have your basic commands and then on the top we have the one and two buttons that I was talking about. On the other side you have these two plus and minus buttons. These buttons allow you to either increase or decrease the speed on the fly of the cap movement. So if you increase the plus button extremely high, then the map the mouse will automatically move the model extremely fast. And when you decrease the button, you will see the model moves a lot slower now. So this feature really comes in handy when you're zooming in on really close pieces and you want to get really accurate with your movements on the 3D mouse. So as you can see, the 3D mouse is versatile and easy to use. It performs well when taking models and assembling them, and by pressing 2 and bringing up the constraint menu on the fly, and pressing 1 to actually apply a constraint, you can see that it is very fast to assemble models and objects using parts.
I hope you guys like my video. Please like it on YouTube. And I hope you learned a lot from it. And I hope you realize that buying a 3D mouse will be the best choice you ever made.